Hey gearheads, thanks for tuning in. Remember all these cool LED headlights we got from Oxida? Well, they just sent us a big package. I wonder what's inside. Let's open it up. Hey Nan, run that intro. Hey gearheads, thanks for tuning in. You've seen the thumbnail, so you know why we're here. But I was going to start the video with, hey, we got an empty workbench. You know what that means? Another project. All right, so we're going to get this wrapper off of here and show you guys what we got. Back in my day, a wrapper was Snoop Dogg. All right. So here's what we got guys, a pair of seven inch driving LED lights. These things are really cool. Let me get them opened up and show you what they look like. All right guys, let's open one of these up. You know, I'm a big fan of checking packaging and seeing how they pack their stuff. Oh, look at that, protection. That's what we like to see. Nice foam. We like little goodie bags. Looks like they give you all the mounting hardware you need. That's always good. And here is the light itself. This thing is massive. And look how cool that looks. That is really cool. These lights are so cool. So we did get two of them, of course. And we got all the wires and the hardware we need to install them. So you might be saying to yourself, Dan, I can't use those on my truck. I don't have a big push bar or grill guard or any of those things to mount them on. Well, guess what? We're going to put them behind the grill. So the first thing we need to do is pop the hood so we have access to the grill to get it off. All right, so just popping that open, we can see that we have uh, some probably 10 millimeter screws, uh, bolts here, 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 and here. There's a little guy here. There's supposed to be a little guy here that's not. And then I think you have to take these loose to pull this back to get this out. And then there's gonna be tabs along the bottom here that we need to pop out in order to get that out. So I'll probably have to show you that after it's out. All right, these things are real handy. If you don't have one, it's just a magnetic bolt. And basically you can uh, take all your fasteners, put them in here, that way it holds on to them so you don't lose them. These are gonna be handy too. I'll show you why in a minute. But for starters, we're just gonna pull these all out and put them in here. Now another thing, when you're taking bolts out of different places, make sure you check and make sure that they're the same. If one's a little shorter, one's a little longer, obviously make a note of where it came out of. These are the same, so we're just gonna pop them out. Pretty sure these are all going to be the same. And that will give us some good access to that. Assuming this is a 7, which it is, so we'll go ahead and do that. I didn't feel like changing the uh, socket on the gun. Alright, so. Obviously, like I said, there should be one over here too, but this truck has been apart before, apparently, and somebody didn't put it back together right. So, now we have some good access to get this out. Oh, there's two hidden bolts too, let me show you. I just remembered, as you come down here to the bottom corners, there's two bolts inside here, right at the bottom corner. One on this side, and one on that side, so we're going to pull those off. Since those are both sevens also, went ahead and got the end for it. And I am gonna check this one against the one I pulled out of there to double check they are the same. So we're in good shape there. Here. Okay, that's that that off to the side, so now this should be separated from the truck, so we just have to separate it from these clips. Alright, there we 
go. Cut it out. So this is how all these clips go in. Um, I see this one the best. So it's got this clip and there's a tab here. So you basically have to push something to release this tab, straighten it out with this and pop it out. Um, now, of course, these are plastic, and if you break any one of these, you might be okay. But if you break more than one, you're going to be in trouble. But as you can see, there's one, two, three, four across the bottom, and two on each side. And there you go. The grill is off. If you want to change your grill out, now would be a good time. So, originally, the idea was to mount them down here. Um, but looking now, the only place I could put that is in this foam behind the... Um, the cover which is not ideal if I put them down here they're a little too low I could make mounts for them but I'm thinking of mounting them upside down to uh, this plastic cover here it's not the radiator support it's metal behind it but this is pretty much the only place I could do that so I think if I do this on each side we'll be okay and I think it's gonna be far enough away from the grill that it's not gonna heat it up because it is LED but we're gonna bring them in the garage, power them up, and see how hot it gets about this far away to make sure that we're gonna be okay. And then I think that's gonna be the plan. So the harness that comes with these um, is actually really simple. So it comes with everything you need. So it's got the relay. Everything is heat shrinked. It's wired up really nice and wrapped. You have your fuse built in. Basically all you need is your positive and ground. So that will go to your battery. And then you have three wires coming off of here. So one wire would go to each of the lights and it already has the end on it. So we don't even need those pigtails. We'll just plug that into there. And then this third run goes to your switch, which is already uh, wired up. All right, so I have the wires hooked up here. I have the switch over here. I have one light facing that way. One light is facing at you. So you're about to see what this thing uh, looks like. So let's plug it in and see what we get. All right, so that's on. Let's see what it looks like. So that's uh, the one light. And that's the daytime running lights. I'm going to leave that on. And we'll check in a little while about how much the heat is here. And see how, uh, you know, what it does. And if it's not too hot, we're not too worried about the grill being about this far away. Then I think we'll be good to go for the install. So we're going to leave this and let it uh, run for a little bit. So here's what they look like. If you want to be in the path of the light, you can see there's a couple different layers, so you get a nice, good spread. And then this is what the daytime running lights look like. Took all the other lights off here so you can see how cool that looks. So once these are lined up next to each other and you got four little beady eyes coming out the grill, or if you're coming down a dark street, uh, that's going to look pretty cool for uh, daytime running lights. All right, so you can kind of see the window. It's still kind of daylight here, but it's pretty dark. And this is with the, uh, just the daytime running lights. I'm gonna turn the spots on and you can see how cool that looks. And that's actually just one of them because one's pointing this way. Let me show you. Yep, they're pretty bright. I think they'll do. So you can kind of see here that the passenger side is nice and clean on the bottom. But on the driver's side, we have this bracket here holding the hood latch cable on. So we're going to have to cut that off and remount it. We're getting there. These things are mounted. Now we got to hook them up. Hey guys, I don't know if this is going to show up. I wasn't going to film it at all, but I'm going to try and show you the result. And then I'll show you uh, in the shop exactly what I did. So trying to run the wire through a grommet. And if you see down there... There's a red wire sticking out um, here, sticking out of that little hole right there. Let me show you the other side. And here's inside the truck, and that black with the red is the back of the tool, and you can see that wire sticking out the handle. So let me uh, finish this, and I'm going to go in the shop and show you what I did. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you the, uh, the idea behind this tool. So let's say this is a grommet. It doesn't have a hole. It's um, in your car, your truck, it's in your firewall. You already have some wires coming in through it. The rest of it is sealed. So the idea behind this is that you can puncture to the side. Obviously, this would be a small grommet, and this is a big tool. But let's say you have a big grommet, and you need to puncture a hole on the side of wherever your wires are or whatever's going through it. 
it's really hard to puncture through with something solid because as soon as you pull it out, it closes up on you. So the idea behind this is that it's uh, clear all the way through. It's got a very sharp edge here. It's kind of like a big needle. So the idea is you have your grommet. So what you do is you puncture the tool through. And then what's really neat about this thing is that you can feed the wire through and it will go through the entire tool and the grommet. And you see it's coming out the back there. And then the idea is when you pull the tool out of the grommet and the grommet closes back up, you already have your wire through. So like I said, this one is already open, so it's obviously loose, but when you puncture through a grommet, since it's rubber, as soon as you pull the puncturing tool out, it's gonna close up on you. So this thing, again, it's got clear all the way through, so you can feed it through and uh, feed the wire all the way through, then you pull it out. So it works really nice. Um, I'll try and put a link. I think I bought this on Amazon. It says PT, so I don't know what it is, but I'll put a link in the uh, video if you'd like to pick up one of these. So now that we got these wires through, all I need to do is put the end back on. And of course, I took a picture to remind me of how it goes together. My fuse block is on this side, which is where the wire goes into the truck. And I also have these nice little ports on the end for power. And I grabbed a ground right down there at the bottom. So I will neaten up all these wires after we make sure the lights work. All right, so it looks like they're working. Kind of hard to see them during the daylight, but wait until nighttime. Uh, so all I need to do now is zip tie all these wires up, make them nice and neat, and then we can put that grill back on. All right, so working in the hot, bright sunlight. If you can see this at all, I got all the wires nicely zip tied and going in through the flap here and coming in here. And you can see I ended up with a bunch of extra wire. Um, zip tying it, making sure it stays away from that radiator and anything else that might be sharp or hot. And then coming up this side, I got the ground and the power up here. And I took a self trill or a self tapper and mounted the relay. And then we have the wire going back behind the fuse block into the cab. So that's it for the outside here. Just got to put this fuse block cover back on and then head inside and work on the switch. Like I said, I'm going to leave the grill off until it's dark out later so I can aim the lights, make sure they're aimed perfectly before I put that grill back on. Now again with this, you just want to make sure all your wires are away from any sharp objects. Everything is zip tied as much as possible. Make sure they're not going to hit anything. Obviously fuses, routing, all that stuff you should know if you're doing any wiring on your vehicle. Make sure you're not going to blow it up. And keep the fire extinguisher in it handy, just in case you do. So now we have the wire with the switch, so we need to find somewhere to put it. Um, I might actually try to put it somewhere in here um, or around there. And the reason is normally you have a three position switch, right? So the off position is going to be the middle and then you have the one, which is the spotlight floodlights. And then you have two, which is the daytime running lights. Now it's able to do that because you have three different wires. So you have the power coming in and then power to feed either one of those. Now they do have extra pigtails that you can get that have the three wires. So you can basically, you could take your power and put them together and you can run both of them together if you want or you could keep them separate and just run them off a switch like this what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually take this daytime running light and i'm going to put it on here with my parking lights so when my parking lights are on the daytime running lights are on and i actually have a switch right here for the fog lights that are in the bumper already so i'm going to hook the these lights up to the fog lamp so when i hit this switch i'll get the new lights and the standard uh, stop light and whenever I have my parking lights on, um, this will activate the daytime running lights. So that way I don't have to worry about a switch, turning it on, turning it off, forgetting anything, because it'll all be in here. Now, obviously with any wiring, if you're messing with stock wiring on your vehicle, make sure you kind of know what you're doing at least. I mean, I'm no expert, but um, since I got the wires, it looks like they'll hook up, uh, they'll at least reach to here. So I'm gonna figure this is a new truck, so these are probably gonna just pop right off because that's the way new vehicles work and we'll see what it looks like behind here. Ah, here we go. All right, I was right, it just pops out. Now, a uh, little bit of research will tell us which wires we need to uh, tap into for the uh, parking lights and also for the fog lights. So that'll all just be right in here. So just gotta feed that wire up here for the switch and we'll be good to go. Okay, pause. 
Some of you may have already caught on if you work on newer vehicles. Obviously, you know I'm a hot rod guy, so I'm used to like 12 volts coming into a switch with a ground, 12 volts going out of a switch, and that's not how newer vehicles operate. The way I think of it is like a car stereo amplifier. It's got 12 volts going into it and a ground coming out of it, and it has a remote wire that goes to your radio, and when your radio turns on, it sends like a five or six volt signal to the amplifier to tell it to connect the 12 volt and the ground and make it work. And that's the way new vehicles work. So while I was actually talking to my buddy Eric about it, I realized, you know what? I can't get a 12 volt signal out of the headlight switch in this vehicle. So plan B, um, I'm gonna take the wire out of the, cab the cabin of the truck. I'm gonna put that all back together. I'm actually gonna tap into the fog light itself and the headlight itself for the marker light so I'm basically going to take the switch instead of feeding 12 volts into it and feeding 12 volts out of it for each of the lights I'm going to get rid of the 12 volt feed because I don't need it and I'm going to take the 12 volt feed from the fog lights that are stock on the truck in the bumper and use that to feed the fog light spotlights of these that we're doing and then the same thing with the marker light parking light is going to go to these lights so I'm going to do all that. That's going to take me a bit of time because I just, I'm just i going to have to like take the headlight out and the fog light out and do all that. But what I can do is I can show you what these lights are going to look like and I can also give you the details on these lights because they're really, really cool lights. You don't have to go through all this trouble. You can mount the switch and be done and have awesome lights. So let me get on with this. I'll show you what they look like and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you all the specs of these things. All right guys, so since I put the 72 in the side of the house, I have to do this kind of in the garage, so excuse the layout, but you can basically see what the lights are gonna do. So here is the headlights, and here are the fog lights on top of the headlights. So you can see I have the fog lights aimed up a little higher than the headlights. The reason is I do not plan on using these on the road ever. Obviously they were just blind people, that's not a good idea. All right guys, I'm gonna show you the information right off the of Oxido's website. You can see their new arrival, these light pods, they're really, really cool. You can select your vehicle at the top. You can do the uh, category, gear, make, and model. That will give you all of the LEDs that you need. And as you see, these pods are like the newest thing. They're really cool. Um, so if we shop now with those, it will tell you um, all the information about them. So we'll click on it here. So they're seven inch. 24,000 LM, that means 24,000 lumens, that means they're really bright. 240 watt round spot flood, because it has both, light pod, off-road, fog driving, roof bar, bumper for Jeep pickup, SUV, truck hunters, that's the description anyway. Um, but you can actually, you can get 20% off if you do LED pod lights. Uh, if that doesn't work and you're watching this later, you can use code Dan's Garage NC. That's D A N S G A R A G E N C, and I believe that'll give you 10% off once this sale is done. Um, so this is for a pair right now. They're 2.99 down from 3.99, and basically this shows you what other lights do, and this is what the Oxido lights do, and we've seen that in the demonstration in the garage. Um, as I said, you can do three modes. You can do just the white light, which is the uh, spot flood, or you can do just the amber, which is the, I'm using them daytime running lights, or you can do both, and that's when you get that other pigtail, so that works for that. Um, they are corrosion resistant surface coating. It's a patented angel eyes design, amber color, etched decorative, decorative texture. Um, the ATP connector is actually all weather. It seals really well. So that's pretty handy. Um, they're completely stable. They have an extra screw in there. I didn't really show that in the mounting, but there's a bolt that goes through to hold it on. And then there's two screws that go in either side so you can angle it where you want, and then you could lock it in. So they'll work off-road, they'll work high speed. Um, the heat dissipation is really cool. These things are heavy duty. Like this is all metal. This is not plastic garbage. They have state-of-the-art temperature, temperature control. Um, to die cast housing. So these things are really nice. These actually have rubber um, protectors at the bottom of the mount. So when you mount them, they're kind of protected that way as well. And then uh, again, you can get the, uh, the hybrid beam. So it's got 18 white high bright chips, two amber, one on each side, and then 20 chips for bright illumination. So you basically get all that together. If you decide to use the extra wire, 
Again, you can hook it up so they both go on or just one or the other. The switch basically controls it this way stock, but you can change that. Like I said, I'm gonna wire mine directly to my truck. And of course you can do different things like that, but uh, it's waterproof, which is great. You wanna put this, obviously most people are gonna put this outside of a vehicle. You can put them on a fender, you can put them on your um, push bar, on your grill guard, on your roof, anywhere you want. These lights are gonna be awesome. They have plenty of adjustment. This is that other screw that I was talking about. Um, and here is that non-slip shockproof rubber pad and that works really well as well. So quick and easy installation. You've already seen that if you watched the video this far. You got the one bolt coming through and then this is the side for the angle and everything like that. The plugs just plug right in. So it's really quick and easy. Um, it's uh, 100 watts power, 12,000 lumens, um, hybrid beams, the daytime running lights, and then the, um, the spot flood, amber and clear. Obviously we know that. This thing works from minus 40 to 185 Fahrenheit. Uh, you know, 12 volts obviously. It's just a really cool uh, all around light. Color temperature, if anyone cares, is 6,000 to 3,400 Kelvin if you even know what that means. Um, I worked in film, so I do, but uh, dimensions, seven inch by seven inch. Uh, it's actually uh, 7.95 to the mount, 3.4 inches depth. So they're really skinny, so they can pretty much mount anywhere. Obviously, as you've seen, I've mounted mine behind the grill. So um, you should go ahead and get a pair. They're really cool. So that's pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. I do have a little bit of buttoning up to do on this truck, but it's nothing you need to watch because you can basically see how awesome these lights are. Uh, if you'd like to check them out, I'll put a link down below for Oxido. Again, if their sale is over and you're watching this later, use code DANSGARAGENC and that'll save you, I think it's 10%. Um, they also have all sorts of headlights and everything like that. In addition, please check out uh, my notes below. There's other hot rod channels you should be checking out. If you like cars, you like the Chevelles and stuff like I'm doing, uh, there's a bunch of cool uh, hot rod channels out there you can check out. And until next time, stay positive and keep on wrenching.